Okay, it's time to settle down for now, let's not be late. Let's get through this lesson and that ticket, so it's time to play. We got students going at it, Raiden versus his new game. Some be talking crazy, they just happy with a room to stay. Anyone who won it, we got champions in every grade. Just a place that educate and versus legacies I made. Each sport in mind, how we define the learning in our brain. How we physically just meant to be society new came. Even all our queens, cause she could beat them if she only played. Why we teach how she could be the best in each and every okay, game. Now, hold up, hold up, hold up. Don't pretend like you don't know us. Got the trip just like we told her. With some knowledge on the shoulder. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Home room lit in every quarter. Why we pull up more than gaming? Cause our coaches really know us. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. What's up, guys? Gaming is becoming bigger and bigger every year. More students are doing it, but less and less are really understanding the work and the jobs and the opportunities that go into creating the things that they are into every single day, the things that they're watching, the media that they're ingesting. And there is a lot of career opportunities mixed into every part. Esports and what we do in the competitions, it's all about giving that knowledge and bringing everything together to create a whole experience from career pathways to college readiness and learning interpersonal skills and learning different social emotional things that will help them be better individuals in the long run. That's what the goal was. So in your body, you're writing about your game's mechanics. You're writing about the game's story, if it has one. There's a lot to be said about journalism and the art of writing and the art of connecting with people. There's many career opportunities, things like shoutcasting and broadcasting. Those individuals who are doing interviews, making YouTube content on games and reporting on gaming news, there's so many different opportunities out there outside of just a student or a pro gamer wanting to play the game. Content creation is broad. Maybe you wanna be a video editor. What does a flyer look like? How do we design things that's appealing and eye-catching to people? Give them options on where to go to learn and use these things and be creative. There's money in that. So we give those tools to the students as well in content creation as well as how to be careful with copy written material. We try to find pieces that they can digest and start with from an early time, and hopefully that we can continue to develop. One of my favorite lessons are Mr. Lopez explained the developing part of like the game and how you can't like copy off of someone else's game or else you could get like fine or like copyrighted maybe one day i want to like develop a game so with that information i know that not to like copy off of other games like um format because it like could get you into big trouble behind the controller speaks to the history of gaming not just the evolution of gaming but the people historical figures, people who, without them, gaming as we know it would not be what it is today. I want students to continue learning their history and, and where ideas and where a lot of things came from and put in a spotlight on those people, those figures, different things that are literally behind the controller is super important. Who can guess what kind of game? Yes, this is a game. Oh, that's a, um, I would've said RPG. This is Final Fantasy before Final Fantasy. Streaming is everywhere. Our students are indulging in Twitch and YouTube content on a daily basis. A lot of work goes into it. There's a lot to know. Uh, the proper PC setup, if you do want to do that, how to potentially stream on your console, how to grow an audience. Streaming is huge, it's huge business. This is a great time for them to gain those skills, gain an understanding on how to communicate with people, how to grow a following, how to interact safely 
with social media? What are some of the things that you want to look out for, how to protect yourself while doing these things and, and learning and meeting new people and also having fun and enjoying it, which comes first? My favorite subject in esports is learning on how to manage my streams and how to promote my brand because me, I want to become a streamer later on in my year and it helped me learn more about what I need and how to start becoming a streamer. Esporting mind in many ways may even be the most important aspect of what it is that we do and what we teach. It's about the way we interact with people, our emotional state and how to control those emotions whenever they seem to get out of hand, especially being a gamer. It's about how you feel after you win. It's about how to deal with you losing and not feeling so great. It's about understanding that accepting a loss means to identify where you went wrong and improve on it and get better and get stronger. Not everybody wins, and sometimes you have to lose to be a great winner. It's all about how you are a part of a community with others and become a better individual, a better person. There's a whole bunch of things that is behind gaming that I think is the true essence of being a responsible gamer. Business is booming. <laughs> Esports is big. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. Now when we talk business, we talk the whole business. We talk about companies. You have a whole bunch of different entities in the space of gaming. The branding aspect, what do the logos look like? How do they sell and market these things to you, to the consumer, to us, the gamer? How do we know about these products? What goes into making these companies worth millions and billions of dollars? And how do we take that knowledge on what they're doing and building their brand and, and making merchandise and products and allowing students to understand that process? What does it mean to create a brand? How do you brand yourself and market yourself? How do you sell? Who are you selling to? Why are you selling? It's important and it's all over gaming no matter what spot or area it's in. Put them on to the brand, bro. What's the name of the brand? Oh yeah. Make sure y'all go cop them at Rare Hearts Apparel on Instagram. Yeah, sir. The hoodie's on deck. Shout out to Rare Hearts. It's, 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 it's starting to get hot, so. Shout out to Rare Heart. These young entrepreneurs out here really doing it, man. Respect the hustle. Respect the hustle. So when we first started the program uh, five years ago, we started off as a summer camp. It's kind of evolved into an after-school program, into now what it looks like today as a full-on elective course. When we looked at the program itself, we wanted to make sure that the educators would consider this a class. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the parents would actually see that their kids were learning towards you know, a career pathway. How can we actually get these kids to actually look at this from a standpoint of, I wanna do this for a living. Whatever you're looking to do, we have the capability of doing it. It really comes down to, do you have the time and do you have the space and are you willing to find the commitment to be part of this? We've built this like Lego blocks. We have all the pieces all spread out. We will start piecing everything together in order for us to build what your school needs and what your program can look like. All right, coach, here we go. Okay. <clears throat> That's a nice page. Just ask your kids to take a minute and go through it. My name is Lou Caglietto. I am an employee of CEI and I consult with the eSports division. 46 years in public and charter school education. I've been a principal for approximately 28 years and it is the administrative background that allows me to collaborate and work with the eSports division and in particular Coach Lopez. There was a benefit to having a licensed administrator. Coach Lopez is a professional in every way but when charter schools offer elective credits towards graduation, it makes sense that there be a licensed administrator behind the scenes in support of everything from lesson planning to lesson delivery. If you are talking to your peers during this test, I'm taking 10 points. The formatting and formalization of those lesson plans has to follow a professional and all-inclusive uh, design. Being a monarch, we were streaming. 
to an audience of a thousand. Or if you wanted to grow your audience to a higher number, what would you do? Coach Lopez has a tremendous fountain of information that he utilizes to create lesson plans. In the two semester course, he's created in excess of 50 lessons. Uh, with that said, the lesson planning has to be sharp, it has to be smart, and it has to be um, consistent. And that is part of my value. There is one tool slash platform that we use that I just couldn't really do what I do as efficiently, at least not yet, and it's Game Plan. So Game Plan is an online platform that allows you to teach and manage uh, the educational side of esports. You're allowed to do anything from creating classrooms that include all of your students to scheduling out days or scheduling out different classes amongst uh, your students. So it's very, very helpful. Aside from that, of course, it houses our lessons. We are able to put our lessons and upload them as we create them, customize them, uh, and do many different things that affords us a lot of flexibility in making sure that we get this education and are able to feed it to the students in a way that they are able to comprehend and they're able to, of course, articulate that they understand. Here's an example, if we'll get into it. This lesson here that's being presented is a lesson on goal setting, and this is typically how it would be broken down. Think about, is there anything that people who are new to Roblox should be worried about? Like microtransactions is a thing, right? Yeah, but as long as you have it. As long as you don't fall for any scams. As long as you don't fall for any scams, know it, have your own credit card. Yeah. Then you don't have to it. I'll, right, and that's great writing. You should recommend that to people. When did I tell everybody to get up? Cuando le dije a todos que se levantaran? Teaching the ENL students was definitely a challenge. Um, at first, I really wanted to figure out what was the best way to take the lessons that we were delivering to every other student and make sure that they was able to absorb and get it and put it in a way that I could best teach them and they could best understand because, you know, there's a language barrier there that I have to get through in order to deliver the content. At first, I started taking the lessons that we already had and then fine tuning it, choosing the most important things, maybe vocabulary, something that would be useful and something that would be easy to digest for them. After a while, I really started to feel that they weren't getting the same materials and the same resources that the other students were getting who did understand English. So I just took Google Translate and whatever other resources, translated pictures and images and other things, and just started delivering the same content. But being able to speak to them and have something translate and get back to them to where they understand was very important and it was very helpful. I started to finally figure out a way where I could reach them and I know that they understood. Emulation in gaming refers to the process of mimicking hardware and software. ¿Qué palabra esto se ve como en español? Emulación. Emulación. ¿Qué significa emulación? Being able to work with Mr. Rodriguez has been super beneficial. He's very attentive. He makes sure that the students understand exactly what they're supposed to be doing, what they're working on. And then, of course, when it comes to actually teaching, he's a great translator. He takes his time uh, and he's very patient. It's all about making sure the kids have what they need, and he's a great example of being supportive on that front. Samir is getting very, very good with his English. So he said, I think that is good for the oldest players that played the old games. The old players feel nostalgia. 
That is his response to should older games be able to be downloaded on the newer consoles. Very, very good. Good job, good job. You're doing very good with your English. Keep on, keep improving, very good. It's getting better and better. I'm telling you, bro, there's a lot of So I would like to see more schools implementing this. I think with the power of technology today and I think with the power of gaming, there's a lot of passionate students there. So I think really reaching out and, and, and getting a better understanding of what the students are enjoying, it's a combination of looking at the middle school side and saying, how can we get those middle school students ready for high school? And then on the high school side, it's how can we get those students ready for college? How can we get them ready to compete in college? Uh, but also, how can we get them to be the managers of the teams? And how can we get them to be involved with programs, along with potentially with some of the universities offering you know, degrees in it? How do we get them to actually think about this as a real career pathway?